to the Dr. Mary Lee Live Show. We're so happy that you joined us today. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. James Cannon. Hello, Dr. Greg Tatum, Michael Tynes, and our special guest today is Ms. Leah Davis. Hello and welcome, all of you. Hello, can you hear me, Dr. Lee? Yes, I can hear you. I think we can hear everyone. Can we? I think we've got you all on now. Thank you so very much. Um, we are here today. We're talking about the original uh, Aunt Jemima, the, the brand, and where we are today with it. We have an, a, a living heir here with us today from the... Um, original Aunt Jemima. We want to take a look at a clip of something that is going on recently. So are we ready for this clip? The descendants of a woman who they say portrayed Aunt Jemima are suing the brand's owner, Quaker Oats. They want $2 billion. Now, the family claims that the food giant promised to pay their great-grandmother a percentage of the profits. Jerika Duncan is here with the new fight that goes back generations. Jerika, good morning. Good morning, Gail. The Aunt Jemima brand has without a doubt evolved over time, but the face is now being called into question by a family that says they have a close connection to the woman on the bottle. The Matches Flavor Blend. Aunt Jemima Pancake Mix. Aunt Jemima is one of the most recognizable brands in American advertising history. Aunt Jemima Pancake. For over a hundred years, her syrups and instant pancake mixes have been staples at the American breakfast table. She was developed a long time ago as kind of a group of stereotypes, all distilled into a single person. Sam Philman, a writer for Adweek, says... Thank you so very much. We're going to just go directly into our conversation. Uh, Miss Miss Leo, I'd yes. like for you to uh, share with us who you are and um, some and your feelings about what's happening today, and uh, and, and explain, you know, your family dynamics a little bit. Okay, so my name is Leah Davis, and I am a great granddaughter of Anna Short Harrington. So my father is her grandson and his mother is her daughter. So our family has been fighting for a very long time, but because how the dynamics of life with how the white people have stolen the products, my great grandmother was brought in after Nancy Green and she recreated the product. Therefore, it took off, and this family made trillions of dollars. Okay, um, um, excuse me. When you say re recreated the brand, specifically, what are you saying? Are you saying that a new recipe or... Um, yes, she recreated the recipes. Okay. Now, does your family have access to those recipes? To the, to I have some of the recipes. I do have some of the recipes, and because of the time that was going on during back in this time, uh, the trademarks was not accessed by, or probably some of my family wasn't knowledgeable to know what they could possibly do, because this is during slavery time. Now, it's documented that she was, uh, she took a job. But she was bought from this. She was bought into this family. The slave owners bought her, wanted her to become the new cook because Nancy Green allegedly was killed uh, because her family was pursuing uh, rights, trademarks, and they wanted money. They wanted their royalties on the brand as well. When they hired my grandmother, they took her from, my great-grandmother, they took her from South Carolina, they moved her to, to, to Syracuse, New York, uh, where, where she became known by recreating the, the recipes at the Syracuse, New York State Fair. Okay, now when you say they took her, 
Uh, who are you referring to? Are you referring to the uh, slave uh, owners? The slave owners. So the yes. slave owners took her to, they hired her, or, or right, she was, she was a paid uh, employee. She was a paid employee. Like yeah, okay. Yes. And so they they brought her to work for them at their in their home or for their family. And is this yeah. when they discovered her recipe? Yes. Okay. She recreated the recipes. Okay. So they liked her food over the food over the pancakes that were already there that had been prepared by the Mrs. Green, right? Exactly. Okay. So did she teach any of you, your any any other members of the family, this recipe? Yes, her daughters. Okay. Uh, her son. And that filtered out to me. Okay. So I came, I, I started cooking with the family when I was eight. But of course she had died by that time. But my grandmother, which was her daughter, her name is Olivia. She is the one that taught me how to cook. And, of course, we had side businesses. We had uh, diners, restaurants, hot dog stands, motels, shelters, anything that we can build off of, we were able to do and with, my, my, uh, with my aunts and uncles. So I began cooking with them. I had an uncle that his name is Uncle Lee. They used to call him the cook. And he had several locations. He, so therefore, I started out with the hot dog stand with him. And then I would work into the chef as like a sous, a sous chef. Right. And then from there, we grew together. But okay. then I branched off, started my own catering business. Okay, and so none of your family... None of your your family, your uh, great grandmother's family, has ever received any royalties or any uh, anything from this the use of this recipe. Uh, your family, your family, right? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so there was a a lot of divide um, from my mom's side and my father's side. It was a lot of divide because of the siblings of my father. Everybody wanted their portion. Everybody wanted their bid into the business. Okay. There was a lot of greed. Okay, and that's kind of typical. I want to go to our uh, co-hosts and uh, ask our co-hosts to to chime in to you know with any comments or questions of of uh, Miss Leah. Uh, starting with Dr. Tatum. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, and our guest Leah. And I think I talked with you before, and I, I love your story, very powerful. It's coming to fruition for you to tell it. Uh, what's interesting is the timing is so uh, correct, Dr. Lee, because of what we're experiencing in our nation. Unfortunately, the tumultuous situations of January 6th is letting us know we need these stories told, told more often, and that's why we appreciate. And uh, what I, what I want to know, would you be willing to um, – travel and uh, share this in some of the schools or maybe what you're doing with Dr. Lee or with, with our youth? I would love to travel. I would love to share this story. This is, this has been um, a journey for the family, but my elder uncle has dropped it in my lap and I believe that I would be, I see it from a different point of view. I see it as a monumental thing. And yes, it just so happened that it happened. This is during the time where now it's landed in my lap. And all I know, I'm being told to fight for it. But I, I see this so monumental during Black Lives Matter. I feel like it should be spoken about. It should, we should be educated because they really want to wipe and erase this whole background and history uh, as of many people as possible. So PepsiCo and Quaker Oats pretty much put a statement out last April when by, uh, Black Lives Matter became a political standpoint 
they stated they wasn't worried about our family coming after them for anything. Um, we were financially capable. So I feel like now if I have the backing, I have a team and I have the support and who we have in office and what we're standing for today, it would be great. I would not mind being able to speak this, speak about it, fight for it, and do whatever I could Thank possibly you. do. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have Michael? Uh, yeah, can you hear me okay, Dr. Lee? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah. Um, hello, Ms. Davis. Uh, this is Michael, a fellow hello. co host of the show. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for joining us today and, and being willing to share your story. Um, a, a question I'd have, because I'm definitely interested in everything you're saying, it's very um, important to, uh, to share pieces of, of history like this. My question to you would be, what do you think is the most important thing about your particular story, or rather the story that you said you inherited now that has become, I guess, um, kind of your, your responsibility to, to look after. What do you think the most important thing people listening to this right now should take away from your story in your own view? I, I think that it's, if it's all possible that we teach people of all ages to learn how to uh, trademark and get their royal, and not just put it in somebody's hand and put someone else's name on it, put their name on it, stamp their name, make sure that it stays within their family, make sure that they have the legal representation. So therefore, we don't have to keep going on this Ferris wheel of trying to fight for our identity. I think that's the most important. I think this is, I think what my great grandmother did, uh, create it. And I think because this product has hit every table globally, we will not just fight for our race as a black race, but other races as well. And I believe that we should, the, for the people that don't know, this would be educational and it needs to be done. And it needs to be spoken about. Yes, and this is part of our history, and it is uh, very important for us to 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 know our history as well as um, our, our legacy to to carry on and to receive. I'm a firm believer in the fact that we should receive that which is due to us, what we earned, what our ancestors have earned. It belongs to us. Um, Michael, do you have another question or comment? I, I do. Um, uh, I, I certainly agree with everything uh, Ms. Davis said, considering that it um, pretty much centers around the importance of ownership, which is something that I, I agree with and I talk about a lot when it comes to our people. I personally am of the position that we should own as much of our resources, our intellectual and our intellectual property and the fruits of our labor as much as possible, given the fact that, you know, we as a people in this country at least have been the population to most disproportionately contribute to the economic foundation of this country, working for centuries, sun up to sundown, making money for other yeah. people that we weren't able to, you know, reap the benefit of benefits of. So I'm certainly 100% pro ownership, African people owning as much as possible. My question to Miss Davis, a follow up, is um, would would you or perhaps anyone else on the call be able to maybe give some insight as to um, just how commercially successful um, uh, you know, these, these recipes, uh, have been, uh, you know, or, or just how widespread the Aunt Jemima brand is not just in America, but maybe globally to your knowledge, any facts or, or figures you could cite? Yes, it is. It is global. It has reached every, com every country in this world. There's not anyone that I've came across from the East coast to the West, um, I've ran across a lot of people that live from Asia to Europe to Africa that has not had this product on their table and or in their grocery stores. And when I speak to them about who I am and kind of tune in to what their thought would be about it, everyone that I've spoken to has been upset. It's always been an issue. And they're always talking to me about 
why we have not received any value or any royalties in regards to this product. Now, I did run some numbers and come to find out that they've made trillions of dollars. And if you think about it, you've never heard Quaker Oaks family. Nothing about them. You've never seen them. They own a lot. They built a lot. But those numbers are in the trillions where they benefited financially across the entire world. So why can we, why haven't they been able to reach out to us? We've been reaching out to them, but like they said in their news, uh, news article, they're not worried. We're not strong enough as a culture or as a family to go after them. We don't have the money to do so. And we are not, we haven't come together as a culture to fight enough. And we have not come together. And I have to admit this. The family is in an in a uproar. Okay, Everybody is so in their ways. Thank you so very much. We'll ask um, Michael for one more comment or question, please. Yeah, so I, I definitely agree with um, uh, what Ms. Davis is speaking to regarding companies. And I, I'm sure this doesn't just apply Actually, I know for certain this doesn't just apply to the company in question we're talking about. This is something that other companies like, um, for example, Monsanto will do, which is if they have a product that they know is a car uh, cancerous, causes people harm, they'll have their actuaries in their company actually calculate how many people are likely to get cancer because of this product. And out of those number of people, how many people using... Um, political data, demographic data, how many people are likely to be able to afford to sue them? And instead of actually putting mm. money into making their product better, they'll estimate a certain amount of funds they need to put to, put to the side that they think they need to beat that person in court. So they're actually very calculated in this. So I agree with what you said. They probably have calculated and seen, okay, they probably don't have the funds to beat us as a company. Here's how much money they would need to do that. Here's how much money we can set aside. And so I, I agree with what you said about the importance of amplifying um, your story and, you know, the, the community coming together to get behind you because that's really the only way you're going to be able to go up to these big corporations exactly. and, and, and get what you deserve. Thank you so much. It was very arrogant for them to do that. They were, it was very arrogant for them to put it out there. Thank you so much. We're going to go to, we're going to ask Dr. Uh, Cannon, Dr. James Cannon, to, to come on in with your um perspectives outstanding everybody great conversation my sister i appreciate you and your family so much help Thank me you. understand a little bit more i know that we have uh, passion do we have the proof what is the proof that we would present in court that uh a settlement or compensation uh was in i mean what what actually could we ask for what's the realistic proof that we have and then my second question would be, um, is your family or within in your minds of, of entrepreneurship, any other uh, franchisable ideals that we can get behind? Are there anything within your family? I know sometimes we can fight over one ideal, but are there any other ideals that's coming down the pipe through your family that we can get behind, help franchise, and help work along with? So I guess I'm just asking about the proof that we have of what we're asking for, uh, documentation that would prove that uh, we have rights to go into court. Yes, I do have some documentation. Uh, my brother tried, but there was some personal issues with him. The judge just laughed because he felt like he was going to fight it on his own. He went without a lawyer because he felt like he could do it. Um, I have documentation that my uncle recently gave to me that showed me trademarks. But of course, the judge was so arrogant about it. He didn't acknowledge anything. You're talking, these are big companies. So... It's not a problem. I'm born and raised in Syracuse, and I've seen our culture get shut down or just removed or just not even acknowledged because they were paid off. Now, as far as what is there to provide that we can go and dig in in a franchise way, I'm the only chef left that I know of. 
I enjoy it. I love it. I've been doing it for years. So, yes, I have created my own products. I do eventually want to put my products on the shelves, and I wanted to replace her. And if I did have the financial funds, I would have requested a I would have gotten a lawyer and went to them and asked them to fight for me. Go to Quaker Oaks in PepsiCo and say, listen, let me be the new face. If I got to go in the back door to do this, I would have been willing to do that. But I did not have the financial funds. This wasn't, this is, re this has been recently left in my okay, life. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, well, I'm going to ask Dr. Cannon, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, you, you have written a book already. There's something from your family in writing. There is a lot of things in writing. I'm saying from you, from your family, in writing no. that we can purchase from either you or your family. You're talking about a book that we wrote? Yes, anything that you've written and your family has written with the history connected. Because it might be wise to go to them and say, listen, you want to combine the, your history with the company's history and then get that and take that, put that in a book, get them to help push that. And if you get your millions from that, because you connect it, you got a history, you got a story, they got a story. Okay, so let's say, hey, after what, four, four out of hundreds of years later, the families and the company came together. And then with that, you do become the face. We make you the face of your book. We make them back your book, make them get behind that book. We push that book and da-da, here you are. And, and, and I don't have a problem with writing the book. Okay. Uh, I don't have a problem with writing a book. Yeah, there is there, there is someone okay. written at this particular time. Um, There's someone, yes, I'm sorry. There is a guy that wrote the book because he went to meet her in person because there was she had had so many people come from all over the world to go to New York State State Fair. And his name is John Troy. But we don't get but that was that was that was a long time that was a long time ago. There isn't anything recent, and there isn't anything directly from from Miss Leah family. and her family. And so yeah. um, we're 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 about to wrap it up here. And I certainly appreciate all of the questions and the comments. Uh, just recently, I want to note that the um, that the trademark, the the original pitch picture has is has been uh changed and there's a new um new logo you know after after this particular picture had been logo for uh over 130 years and um not, i'm not a lawyer i got paralegal background some and and working with lawyers and so forth but i don't know what type of impact this has in changing the name of the, um, you know, that the, the, the name is being changed, the picture is being changed. I'd like to know um, from Miss Leah, the photo was this a made-up photo, or does this photo resemble your? Um, no. Okay. That's actually her. This is this, actually her. Yeah. So what happened? Um, and I'll say this real quick. They came, they asked her because black people were feeling like this was a racist issue. They came to her on her work site, asked her to remove her bandana, make up her face and boom, there she was. Okay. So My with the scarf with and without the scarf is her with right. and without the scarf is her. Is, is exactly. Actually My her. Okay. Certainly we yes. do appreciate you so very much. We appreciate you joining us. Um, he never received any today, royalties. Th there were never any royalties. There were never any royalties. Never Not to my knowledge. To, to the family's you know, knowledge. Okay. And how, your, how, family, how does your family feel about them being taken off the box and everything? How do you feel about that? <laughs> Everybody's crying. I haven't even been asleep yet. That's how upset I am. So that's a bad move as far as the family's concerned. Even though you're not getting yes. paid nothing for it. We'd rather exactly. have it on there than not. Right. That's incredible. Able to they got to offer a suggestion. Go ahead. Because this, is, this, is a, this seems like a sense of an important issue. Quickly, really uh, quick. We got like okay. less than two minutes. Yeah, so because of how important this particular 
uh, case is, because this isn't just about, you know, certainly your family is a centerpiece of this, but you're talking about something bigger as it applies to ownership and the importance of ownership. I think the best case scenario is to amplify this story as much as possible. So, yes. you know, if celebrities are able to amplify this to a degree such that um, as a community, I don't know, it trends on Twitter and we can maybe yes. have a boycott against the company if they don't allow you and, and you know, the, the members of your family who are representatives of this issue to speak with them. Yeah. I think we should right. use some boycott power. Yes. Please feel free to call so we can talk. I'm open okay. for phone calls. Absolutely. Okay, certainly we appreciate you all today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Miss uh, Leo, a.k.a. Miss, Miss Blonde. Blondie. Okay. <laughs> Blondie. <laughs> Blondie. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cannon. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dr. Tatum. We appreciate our audience. Uh, always, we love you. Stay safe. This is Dr. Mary Lee Live. Until next week, we will see you again. Thank you. God. Oh.